last month, uh, I attempted my first 100 mile race and had a DNF or a did not finish in the race. And before it got too far in the future beyond the race, I wanted to have a chance to kind of talk to you all about how I feel now about DNFs and uh, my attitude towards them and why I think maybe you all should think about it also. So we all do ultra marathons and distance running because we like to achieve things and failure is not anything that any one of us want to do. It is obviously the very thing we don't want to do or we wouldn't spend all the time and the money and the things that we do to prepare for a race and then just not care if we don't finish it. But uh, all the years that I've been doing ultra marathons, I've kind of I've, I've kind of come to this Zen point, if you will, about how I feel with about them. So I wrote things down. I didn't script this all out. And I just wanted to talk to you all, to the community that I tried to serve, uh, about my uh, real thoughts about this. So ultimately, shit happens, and you can't focus. On the negative, like every event, every hard thing you do in your life is there's something to distill from that, whether it be learning or just kind of reflection upon things you can't control and and just accepting them. And so in this race, the weather came in, you know, super cold temperatures in the rain, and we just didn't have the dry clothes to put on to keep ourselves in the game. And a lot of the people who were successful did. And that's awesome that they planned that out and they had people there to see to see them at every single aid station and, and allow them to change clothes. And at the end of the day, you know, I do ultra marathons ultimately. And I've thought about this a lot. Why do I do ultra marathons? Why do I put myself through them? And it's very cliche that I do them for the experience. I, I, I do them for to meet people and to give myself an opportunity to keep myself healthy and active and striving towards a goal. And it's not about the buckles and the medals. You know, I keep the medals all back here, but I rarely reflect upon those. And when I think about the accomplishments over all these years, I think about the people I ran them with. I think about the days, you know, I don't think about the finish line. I, I honestly don't. And that sounds like an excuse. And it sounds like this weird thing, like you're trying to front load an excuse as to why you don't care if you don't finish. And it's not about that. I had a DNF, uh, Bel Belmonte, uh, the 50 miler uh, was my first DNF due to injury. And I had a lot to, ref a lot of time to reflect on that. I don't think about the finish line that much. That's not when I reflect and think back at the race. I think about who I ran it with, you know, any of the funny things that went on, the stories, the time you shared with people, like that's what I think about. And after this past kind of DNF, my first hundred miler, I've been wanting to run a higher hundred miler for about 10 years. It was this really big goal that I had. And, and then it didn't happen and got about 60 miles. And then when I, you know, when I looked back on the race, I was like, you know, that was a beautiful day. It was an absolutely gorgeous day up until the rain came. I ran it with a good buddy. I had, we had great conversations. I got to meet a lot of people. I got to experience the Yeti 100 in all its glory. I mean, I've been looking at that race for years and it was just cool to meet all the people and meet Jason and, and to see the event for in, in, in real life instead of just in video. And I honestly had no regrets about that. And I'm happy about that. I'm happy I'm able to reflect back in a positive way on that DNF. I mean, I have down here, I says, you know, races are hard and that's why we sign up. I, I, I'm signing up to go through adversity. I'm not signing up for your local turkey trot and I just get my medal at the end. There's no, there's not that you don't, people don't train hard for those. That's not putting those down, but there's no real accomplishment in finishing one of those for me at this point. So it would be about the event, you know, training for it, running it. Not that I finished it. It would be it would be about the experience, and and ultimately that's what running ultras is about. That's what running trails is about. It's the community. It's the people you meet. And I have such really cool memories of running JFKs and just running with a different person every time I've ever run a JFK. Running Belmonte the first time, the people who I met during that, and the pacer that I had. 
You know, I've run three ultra marathons with Joe Kern, who you saw in several of my videos over the last couple of years. So I take into account all of those factors on whether or not um, I need to kind of reflect on what I did. So this race, I was very prepared. I had the best race of my life in the Yeti 100. At almost 60 miles, I felt so fresh. I had not a doubt in my mind I was going to finish. So to me, that was a win and things happened and it didn't work out the way I wanted. Um, you know, I thought about how my training went. It went really well. It could have been a lot more, but I had been really working on kind of math training and it really worked out well for me in pacing. I think that I executed the race plan that I had very well. And I think I, I set, you know, Joe and I up for success and we just couldn't control what happened with the weather. Um, you know, I think, you know, did I do something stupid? Not really. My nutrition was on par that day. Everything was completely fine. I'd never really bonked. Uh, if I could really fix one thing, if I could go back in time in a time machine and fix that day, I would have had someone at every aid station with dry clothes. That's it. And that's a lot of, that's a lot to ask someone. And it's a remote area with no cell signal with a, nothing to do all day long. So that's the only thing I would fin it. I would, I would change. And so ultimately why I do ultra marathons is the experience and you know, I'm going to be trying to do these for the rest of my life. And it's not about the buckles. It's not about the medals. It's not about bragging. It's not about me trying to feel any more like I'm um, trying to legitimize myself somehow. It was like that when I first got into them uh, because I had never run them and I was trying to prove myself. And there's no doubt in my mind that I can finish almost any race that I can train appropriately for. And, you know, if I had enough time, if I didn't, didn't work out the first time, I could do it a second time or a third time if that's what it takes. And I'll go back to Yeti next year and hopefully if everything goes well, you know, I'll get that buckle and, and, and put that one in the record books and be able to celebrate that. But this community is so awesome. When I posted on Strava that that happened, you know, we just flood each other in this community with, you know, positive uh, support for, you know, failure. Like no one's like, we'll put you down. Like we don't have this kind of snobbery in trail running and ultra running. It's really, it's always like we're in this together. Even when you're in the race and you're running, like you team up together, like we're going to tackle this thing together. And it's not like that in marathons and, and, and the distances that are underneath that generally. I mean, it's, you never really, I've run, I don't know, 10 plus marathons and I've never had anybody want to join me and run the marathon with me and say, you know, we're going to finish this together. It's never happened at any other <laughs> race distance below a marathon. Uh, so that's why I love this community. And, you know, I hope you all understand that if, if the DNF happens, that it's not the end of the world, that no one really cares. Like if somebody DNFs in our community or someone I know, I don't think less of them. I'm like, wow, you know, they tried that. Like, was it fun? Like what happened? Like, and we all kind of just talk about it. And I think that is a healthy, positive way to look at DNFs. And I want to just kind of put this on the record and speak to the motivation theory running community about that. You know, I know that I made that kind of mini movie about the Yeti 100 and I talked about it in my, in the kind of the narrative, the, the voiceover that I did. Um, but that was more uh, theatrical. I wanted to kind of get down the brass tacks and, and talk to you as John, not scripted, me, uh, so that you all know that I'm okay with it and that, you know, if it happens, it happens. And uh, I don't want it to happen anymore. But if I have a good time and I'm prepared and I execute my race the way that I think that I should, what more can I ask? What more can I ask? I had a blast. It was an awesome experience. So, if you are interested in seeing the event that I'm talking about, the Yeti 100, and you haven't seen it yet, I think I have one of the best pieces of work that I've put together in this movie about me running with Joe in this Yeti 100 this year. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and click right there. I will see you in that video. And if you enjoy that, please share it with others in the running community. Thanks for watching.